Today I am finally starting a reading vlog that I've been saying I'm going to film all year and that is reading books that you recommend me from my own TBR. So I'm going to be using a random comment generator to choose comments from the video that I made back in January with my entire own TBR. I asked you for some recommendations, you shared some recommendations and I'm excited to read some of them. I did do a similar reading vlog last year so I will try and remember to leave that linked in the cards and in the description just in case you would like to check it out. I have already chosen my first book for this vlog. I decided to generate a comment last night because I wanted to read something yesterday evening. The comment that was chosen was from Olivia Savannah. There was actually a few books within the comment which is great because it meant that I could choose from a few different options. Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer I do really want to get to at some point. I keep looking at this but I never feel like I'm in the right headspace for it. This year has been just quite difficult in general and I know that this has quite a strong cancer related story. My Mechanical Romance by Alexine Farrell Falmouth aka Olivia Blake is one that I think I would prefer to pick up in spring or summer because this is a YA contemporary and I feel like I'll be more in the mood for that around the spring or summer time. So that leaves two books I have to choose from, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie and Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Both of these are classics that I have never read before. Murder on the Orient Express I had actually managed to avoid spoilers for this for ages until earlier this year when I went to a murder mystery night and my friend made a comment which completely spoiled this book <laughs> so I've had less enthusiasm to pick it up since then so it's one that I will get to soon however the book that I decided to go for is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is a classic gothic novel and I feel like the vibes are perfect for this time of year. I read the first few chapters last night and I think this was a really good idea. I can feel the atmosphere and I'm excited to see where this goes. I know that this is following a woman who ends up marrying this guy and it's a bit of a whirlwind romance and she ends up going to his grand estate in England called Mandalay and there she feels herself being haunted by his wife who passed away the previous year. I don't know whether it's like a figurative haunting or whether she is literally being haunted but yeah I've heard great things about this I've heard loads of people say it's one of their favorite classics and I'm excited to see if I feel the same so I'm going to try and read some more of this tonight I don't know how much I'm going to get read over the weekend because I'm actually going to a Halloween party tomorrow night and then I'm stopping at my mum's afterwards so I'm probably not going to read much from Saturday afternoon until Sunday afternoon when I get home but we'll see how I get on with this over the weekend it is quite quite long, it's over 400 pages and because it's a classic it's also not like the easiest breeziest read. However this is the vibe that I'm looking for right now so fingers crossed this ends up being a win for me. I have just finished filming a very long video so my voice is a little bit croaky. I'm gonna see how it goes for this update but I wanted to give you some reading updates because I am 25% of the way through Rebecca and I'm really enjoying it so far. I feel like the beginning was a little bit slow but once we got to Mandalay and we're seeing this main character in this new situation. It is really compelling. The main character has a very different background to her husband. So she, I think, is an orphan. She arrives at this grand manor house and she has no idea how to be Lady of the Manor. And she keeps making these little faux pas where oh it's so tense <laughs> like the anxiety that I am getting. She's trying her best and she's trying to see the bright side of the situation. She's in love with her husband but she's also a lot younger than him. I'm very intrigued. I've never seen any adaptation of Rebecca by the way so I haven't been spoiled for this. I have no idea what direction this is going in but I know that this is one of the best psychological thrillers of all time for a reason. So yeah this is going well. I'm gonna go and get ready soon to go out because I think I mentioned yesterday I have a Halloween party this evening and I'm going as a hobbit which is very exciting so if I remember I will insert a picture or some footage so you can see my outfit. But yeah very excited that I am finally reading this because I read so many thrillers and the fact that I haven't read one of the classics I feel like it's a travesty so I'm glad that I'm finally picking this up. It's Monday evening and I did not vlog at all yesterday. I was too tired by the time I got home but the 
the Halloween party was great. I don't get to see my school friends that often because I now live a little bit further away. So yeah, it was good to get together. It was a really good evening. And when I got home yesterday, I spent most of the afternoon watching CSI because I was tired. But then I did read some more in the evening. So I'm now halfway through, over halfway through Rebecca. I think I'm around 53% of the way through. And I am loving this so much. I'm not going to spoil anything, even though this is a classic because I hadn't read it up until this point. I don't want to say anything spoilery because if you've been thinking about picking it up, then hopefully I can convince you because this is incredible. It's so well written. The chapters in this are quite long, but the chapter that I just read in particular had this slow building tension and it was almost like watching a movie where you want to watch it behind your hands because it's just so awkward and tense. It's not scary or anything like that. I knew that we were building up to something and I didn't want to watch it happen. I was so anxious and I think the characterization in this is incredible. Like I feel like I know this main character and I know her personality. So however she reacts in a certain situation, she doesn't have the strength or experience to remove herself from situations where she is a little out of her depth and she doesn't know how to stick up for herself because it's not something that she's ever had to do before. Historical context obviously plays a big part in this because of how women were expected to talk and behave back then. She'll occasionally make these little assumptions about people. She might, for example, be having a conversation with someone and afterwards she'll be thinking, oh, they're judging me because I did this or I said this. But you're not sure whether that is actually the case because you're so contained within this main character's mind. You're not sure whether that person is actually doing or thinking that or whether it's just the main character's insecurity and it's her thoughts about the situation that are coming through. The dynamic between the main character and her husband is also very interesting. He is quite clearly, at least in my opinion, he is quite clearly still grieving after losing his wife Rebecca the year before and there's a lot that he's holding back from the main character. It's difficult to work out what his intentions were with marrying the main character. I have my theory obviously. He treats her like a child though and the main character finds this very frustrating because she's becoming more and more aware of how different she is to Rebecca and something that I find really interesting that I already knew before picking up the book this is one of the main things that I've heard about this book is that the main character is never named she's always referred to as Mrs De Winter and I heard that the author did that deliberately to kind of emphasize the presence of Rebecca I don't know whether this would be considered a domestic thriller but what I found is a lot of the modern domestic thrillers that I read. They're popcorn thrillers and so the characters don't have a lot of depth, there's a lot of talent and not much showing and so I find them quite boring. <laughs> there are some that I have enjoyed in the past but the main difference I found with reading Rebecca is that yes there is a lot of domestic drama however it's showing instead of talent and there's just so much tension. The atmosphere is impeccable and yeah this is giving me five star feelings which is really exciting because this is only the second classic that I've read this year and the last classic that I read was back in January so I was well overdue for picking up another and yeah I'm just so glad that this is going so well. I tried to film this vlog update last night and it didn't go very well. I was stumbling over my words. I think it was a bit too late in the evening and I was too tired so I'm gonna refilm that vlog update because I really wanted to tell you about Rebecca. I have now finished this and oh my goodness this was incredible five stars. I think if you have read a lot of thrillers or you have an interest in that genre or genres that are adjacent to thrillers then I think you should read this. Obviously if you haven't read it already <laughs> because I really appreciated seeing how today's authors might have been inspired by Daphne du Maurier. Erin Kelly actually blurbs the front of this version and that makes a lot of sense to me because I read two Erin Kelly books, gave both of them five stars and the skeleton key in particular I think has a very gothic atmosphere so it would make sense if Erin Kelly was inspired by Du Maurier. This was just so clever. The surface level plot is exploring these interpersonal relationships on this estate called Mandalay and it goes in a direction that to be fair I probably could have guessed however I was more enjoying the journey to get there and the atmosphere and the tension and there were a few twists towards the end that I wasn't expecting. The ending, I will say, was very 
abrupt, <laughs> which I think at some point in the past, uh, someone had warned me about that. I got to the last page and I tried to turn to the next page, expecting there to be more and there wasn't. So that was a thing. I think that's just something that you should be aware of going into the book, but it does make sense in a way because you already know what happens to these characters. It literally tells you at the beginning of the book. So yeah, those are my main thoughts on Rebecca. There was also an afterword at the end written by another author whose name I can't remember. So I'm just going to double check. Sally Bowman wrote the afterword and I really enjoyed reading that because there were some points that she raised that I hadn't really considered. There was some stuff that I'd been thinking about in the back of my mind, but it's just nice to see other people had that same experience while reading it. And there's also a part where she compares and contrasts the two Mrs. De Winters. And I really appreciated that as well because I hadn't even considered some of the points that she raised. So yeah, five stars. And I have now done another, I don't know what to call it. I've chosen another comment. So I will insert that footage now so you can see. But the comment that was chosen was from Lorena. There was two books that I could choose from in that comment. And both of them are books that are still on my TBR. <laughs> There's a few comments that have books that I have already read. But the two books that were in Lorena's comment were Dominicana by Angie Cruz and Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Girl, Woman, Other, I am so intrigued about because I've heard incredible things, but I'm trying to get the audiobook from my library because I've heard really good things about the audiobook, even though I do own the physical copy. So I think the book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog is Dominicana. I am going to try and read Girl, Woman, Other before the end of the month. The audiobook is going to be mine on the 29th of November, so it's a little bit too late. I didn't end up doing any reading last night, so I will catch up with you next once I do have some reading updates. Hi everyone, happy Friday. Apologies for the lack of b-roll in this vlog so far. I haven't really done anything this week that's been worthy of being filmed. However, I am going into Cheltenham tomorrow, so I will try and remember to take my vlogging camera with me and get some footage while I'm there. I do like Cheltenham and they have a really nice water stones as well, which I think I have featured in vlogs before. I have made a start on Dominicana. I read the first 100 pages last night and so far I'm really liking the writing in this even though I think that it's going to be very hit or miss for some people. Angie Cruz doesn't use speech marks and for ages I thought I didn't like this kind of writing because I really didn't like Normal People by Sally Rooney and that has a similar sort of writing style. However I then read Trespasses by Louise Kennedy last year and loved it. I do think that this type of writing style can work in some situations. It's just dependent on the story and how well it captures me. This is a really interesting story. So it's set in the 1960s and we're following a young girl called Anna who is 15 when we reach the main timeline of the story and she's living in the Dominican Republic. However, her mom is putting a lot of pressure on her to marry this older guy who's in his early 30s because he comes from a wealthier family and he's promised to take her to New York City and give her a more privileged life and her mom is putting a lot of pressure on Anna to marry this guy which she does end up doing it's written in the synopsis it's not a spoiler the book is basically about her experience of marrying this guy and moving to New York and everything that happens from there yeah I'm really glad that I'm getting to this because as with Rebecca this is another one that has been on my TBR for a while so I will try and read some more this evening and then I will catch up with you tomorrow when I will have new hair I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow and I am equally excited but also nervous. I haven't decided yet how much I'm going to get chopped off but I know that I don't like my hair this length so I'm thinking maybe shoulder length but we'll see how brave I'm feeling when I get to the hairdressers tomorrow. Every minute slipping by Even when I close my eyes Ruthless unknown
everyone happy saturday i got my haircut earlier as you can see i don't know actually if you can see i don't know how different it looks but i got a little bit taken off the ends and then i also had some framing done around the face so it feels a lot fresher ready for my birthday and christmas and the new year i just wanted to get it done before the end of the year so i didn't have to stress about it glad that i got that done because it's been playing on my mind for the last few weeks that i was gonna have to go and get my haircut i always feel very anxious when it comes to anything to do with my hair so even though I love going to the salon and I love the feeling of my hair after it's been cut, it always weighs on my mind in the run-up. So yeah, had a nice day so far. I did pop into Waterstones and also Hatchets in Cheltenham, but I didn't buy anything. I told myself that anything I buy now, I'm realistically not gonna get round to until the new year. So is there any point in buying it when I could just wait until after Christmas? Especially because Waterstones sometimes do a half price sale on hardbacks after Christmas. Christmas, I thought anything that I see today, I could possibly buy cheaper in a month or so. So yeah, didn't buy anything. However, I have been reading. I managed to get to, I think about the 75% mark of Dominicana by Angie Cruz. And this isn't a long book. It's only about 300 pages. Really liking it so far. I don't know whether it's gonna be a five stars because it feels like there's something just missing. I don't know whether it's the writing style and how it feels kind of detached. I always fine with this type of writing style that it creates this distance between you and the characters and sometimes I really like that and I do like it in this book I find it effective even though there's these emotional things happening I'm not really feeling those emotions I feel like I'm being told what emotions the characters are going through rather than feeling it for myself so yeah I am liking this I do tend to like this type of historical fiction where we're following a character throughout a time in their life the book is mostly set in New York and you're following this main character as she first arrives in the city and she's very reliant on her husband because she doesn't speak English or at least she doesn't speak that much English. She feels quite lonely because she is so reliant on him however over time she gradually starts to carve her own life in the city. It's been really interesting as well learning a little more about the history of the Dominican Republic. It doesn't go too much into detail but there's this tense political situation that happening alongside our main character's story. So she isn't directly involved, but she's hearing about stuff that's happening to her family back home. All of that has been really interesting. So uh, I think I'm going to try and finish this tonight and then I might pop in and do another roll before I go to sleep or I might just wait until the morning. Hi everyone, happy Sunday. My equipment is currently at the back of the room, <laughs> as you can see. Everything is all over the place at the moment because me and my partner have just finished filming an updated bookshelf tour, which I'm probably gonna try and edit this afternoon. I don't know if I can be bothered though. It ended up taking us a lot longer to film than I was expecting. So it's probably gonna take me a while. And also I need to film an intro and an outro at some point. But yeah, that is why I'm currently sat on the floor. I'm also wearing a Christmas jumper, even though it is currently the 10th of November. Last week has been hard. I feel like we need some Christmas cheer in our lives. So yeah, Christmas jumper, sat on the floor, ready to give you some reading updates because I have now finished Dominicana by Angie Cruz and I really liked this. I'm going to give it four stars. The main reason it didn't quite give me that five star feeling is because I felt like there were certain events that were being skimmed over and I wanted it to go into a little more depth in order for me to get that emotional feeling that I think was trying to be pushed across. I did really like the ending actually. There was a point at the end that felt really poignant. I feel like the main purpose purpose of this novel was to get across how much the main character sacrificed for her family and I think that did come across in the end however I wanted that to be a more prominent theme throughout and it was I just don't think it really went into as much depth as I wanted I did really like the author's note at the end though where Angie Cruz talked about how this was inspired by her mother's journey and how there were so many women like her who moved to the US in the 60s it was interesting because she says in that author's note that when she told her mom that she was planning to write this book, her mom's reaction was, who would want to read that? Is that not too mundane? Is it not exciting enough? This was quite a quiet story. And so I think the author achieved what she wanted to achieve. And yeah, I would recommend this. It is of course now time for me to choose my third and final book for this vlog. So I have the YouTube comment picker up on my phone and we will see what it comes up with. 
why did I know that this was gonna happen? This is not, honestly, I haven't, oh no, okay. So we landed on Abby's comment, which means I am gonna be reading A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is fine, this is absolutely fine. I had already mentally prepared myself for the possibility that I was gonna have to read this book because there were only 14 comments on that original video and some of the books I'd already read. So when I was looking through, I knew that this was a possibility. I'm prepared, I'm ready. I am gonna try and get through this in the next week. And um, yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. I am excited for this book. I do wanna clarify. I wanted to read this book a year ago, but I didn't get around to it. So uh, it's good that this vlog is finally making me pick it up. And I have a feeling I'm gonna love this. My plan is to immersion read this. So I do have the audiobook. I'm gonna read it physically while listening to the audiobook because that's what I did with Priory of the Orange Tree. And I really enjoyed that experience. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna start on this hopefully this afternoon and I will let you know once I am maybe a third of the way through but this is a 900 page book so a third of the way through is about 300 pages I'll let you know once I have some thoughts and feelings on it anyway it has taken me three days to read 120 pages of this book I am literally I think on page 120 so I've barely made a dent in this mammoth book but I wanted to let you know I have now started it it's not going well but I have now started a day of fallen night and I don't really have much to say about it yet so what is the point of this update but I wanted to let you know I started the book. <laughs> this has mostly been set up so far so we are following several different characters across this world. I wonder if I can show you the map and whether it's going to make sense if I show you the map. Shall we try that? So in this world you have an east and a west so this here is the west and then this here is the east. So we are following several characters who are in various areas of the world. There's also a south as well, which is kind of south of the west. That was a bit confusing, <laughs> but all you need to know is that there are various characters who are in different places in this world. That's kind of all I've got for you <laughs> so far. No, there are kind of like micro plots going on. There's one perspective, which I think is going to be more political. Then there's another perspective where we're following this young girl who, again, it's quite political. Her mom is trying to arrange a match for her. My favourite perspective is in the south where we are following this older woman who I believe is around 50. I don't know how much to say because I feel like you could read this even if you haven't read Prior of the Orange Tree because it's doing a good job of settling us into the world. I do feel immersed when I read it. I feel like this is the kind of book that you can't really read in stages. Like that's how I've been reading it. I've been reading like a few chapters a day and I feel like I need to sit down tonight and just read, <laughs> like read 100 pages or 200 pages and I think that's going to really help me get into the story a lot more because this has mostly been set up so far. So yeah, that's where we're at with A Day of Fallen Night. I have also started an audiobook, so I think I mentioned earlier in the vlog a book that was recommended a lot from my TBR was Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, which I requested through my library and they emailed me a few days ago to say that the, my holders come in. So I started listening to it and I am loving this book so much. We're basically following various characters. It starts with one character that you're following and it's basically like not quite a stream of consciousness but this character is essentially telling their story. Then it moves on to another character and then it moves on to another character but these characters are all linked. It's really interesting so far. I love the narration on the audiobook. These characters feel so alive so that is going really well so far. I have been reading this past few days. It's just that this is so slow that I feel like I haven't been reading much, but I have been because I've been going for my walks and I've been listening to my audio book. I think I'm about a third of the way through Girl, Woman, Other. So hopefully I will have some final thoughts on that as well to share with you if I can finish it before this vlog needs to go live. Not that it needs to go live by a specific date, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Hi 
everyone, happy Saturday. It is now the weekend again, so I thought I would pop in with another reading update because I have been making decent progress with both of the books that I'm currently reading. The first of which is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. I am still not even halfway through this. I think I'm about 40% of the way through. I'm on page 350, so I'm at the end of part two, about to start part three, and I am liking this so far. With a book this size, if I wasn't enjoying it enough, then I would be getting that feeling of wanting to DNF and I haven't had that feeling yet. So that's a good sign. I love the world in this. I feel a similar way about this to how I felt about Prior of the Orange Tree, where I love the world. It's so fascinating how Samantha Shannon has created all of these different cultures and religions and how that influences the politics of this world. I think it is such a fascinating world. However, I'm not that attached to any of the characters really. My favourite character is possibly Tunava. What I like about Tunava character actually is she is in an established relationship which she's been in for decades and I think that Samantha Shannon has wrote that really well. This is something very niche that I don't see that often in fantasy books is characters who are in established relationships that began before the start of the book. With a lot of the other characters there's been hints at possible romantic pairings or relationships that might develop and I'm just not that invested in any of them. I don't really care that much. However, I am happy to just hang out in this world and just see how the plot unfolds. The plot, I can't really explain what the plot is because to be honest, I don't really know what it is yet myself. However, we are seeing how the world is changing. We're seeing the world become the world that we know from Priory of the Orange Tree, even though you could read this first, in my opinion. Whichever you read first, it is gonna spoil certain aspects of the world and the history. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, this is going well so far. It's giving solid four star feelings, but depending on how the rest of the book goes, it could turn into a five stars. I'm literally only about 40% of the way through, so there's a lot still to come that I might end up really, really loving. I have also read some more of Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I am over halfway through this now. It's split into sections, and I think I'm currently on chapter three. So if I just show you the contents list at the beginning, you basically have five chapters. So the first four chapters are split into three parts. So you get the perspective of 12 characters in total. I don't know whether I would be having a different experience if I was reading this physically, but with the audiobook, there are parts that feel almost poetically written. There are also parts that feel very crude and blunt and direct. It all feels very deliberate though to evoke a certain reaction from the reader. There is also a lot of trauma in this, so I would recommend checking content warnings if you need them. I don't want to go through every single perspective that you get in this, but you see characters at different different stages in their lives. So the youngest character that we've heard from so far is I think 19 or 20. You see mothers and you see daughters and you see how they reached the situation that they're in now. So just to give you one example, you do have the perspective of this woman who when she was younger, she ended up in a relationship that turned abusive. You also get the perspective of a woman who when she was 13, she was at a party and she was attacked by a group of men. And parts of this are really difficult to read. It's uncomfortable, but it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. Even just looking at the way that it's written, because obviously I have been listening to the audiobook for this, but if I can find a part, you can see where, for example, it doesn't use capital letters and it has these run-on sentences and it has repetition to really drive the point home. I'm feeling the emotions I think that the author wanted me to feel. So yeah, this is fantastic. It's given me five star feelings already and I can't see that changing. So very glad that I did decide to pick this up. My plan is to try and finish both of these books by around Tuesday or Wednesday next week because this vlog has been going on for long enough. I know that it's not like the longest vlog but I have been filming this vlog for over two weeks now and I want to make sure it goes out before the end of November and I do have uni friends coming to stay next weekend so I know I'm not going to do any reading next weekend so hopefully next time I come and speak to you I will have finished both of these. <laughs> Thank you. 
know what's really weird is when I started this vlog a few weeks ago, it was very much feeling like autumn. The leaves were still on the trees and I was getting ready to go to a Halloween party. Whereas now it's three weeks later and we had snow this week. It's cold. I'm going to a Christmas market tomorrow. So we have literally seen the changing of the season throughout this vlog. However, it's almost time to wrap things up because I have now finished the two books that I was reading. So we're gonna start with Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I finished this a couple of days ago, given it five stars. It was incredible. The writing in this was so beautiful in places. And I was just so immersed every time I started listening to this. So I can always tell, I've said this before, but I can always tell when I'm into an audiobook because I keep looking for excuses to carry on reading it. And I was listening to this at every opportunity. So very glad that I finally picked this up. The only thing I wanted to quickly mention, which isn't so much a critique, it's more of an observation. But when I was reading this, like I said, I was absorbed in the story and I felt like I was reading about real people. However, I think there were some perspectives that were stronger than others. And so because there's a lot of connections in this, there were parts towards the end where I recognised characters' names and I knew that I'd read their story, but I couldn't remember which story was theirs. The ending to this did make me cry and there were a few moments where I could really feel the emotion. So five stars, would recommend this if you haven't read it already. I know that it won the Booker Prize in 2019, it literally says on the front cover, but yeah, if you are interested in this book and like me, you just haven't got round to it, then would really encourage you to pick it up. And especially the audiobook I thought was a great listening experience. My throat is really, really croaky. I did not sleep well last night. I was filming with work yesterday and it took me two hours to get home. So by the time I got home, because I've been awake since I think around half six, quarter to seven, and that's a lot earlier than I usually wake up. I was exhausted, but then I couldn't get to sleep until I think about two. You know where you're just so tired that your brain won't shut up because you've just gone past tiredness? That was me last night. So yeah, if I am struggling to get my words out, then that's why. But I wanted to wrap up this vlog now because I have uni friends staying this weekend and I know I'm not gonna do any reading. I'm not gonna do any reading tonight and I'm not gonna do any reading tomorrow. Maybe not any reading on Sunday either. But what I can do on Sunday is edit this vlog. So we have one more book left to talk about and that is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This, I'm also tempted to give five stars. I think technically it's more like a 4.5, but I gave Prior of the Orange Tree 4.5 stars. And I think objectively this is better. Like the pacing in this is much more consistent. When I read Priory, the main issue that I had was with the pacing. There were elements of the story that felt very rushed, especially the ending. I think this did a better job of showing character interactions and kind of building those relationships. And the further that I got into it, the more I felt invested in the characters, even though I have read better character writing. I think there were some interesting relationships in this. When I was at the halfway point, I made some assumptions about what direction I thought the romantic relationships would go in and I was wrong. And there was a lot more complexity to certain relationships than I was expecting. This still is not a romanticy or even a fantasy romance. It is purely like, in my opinion, epic fantasy that happens to have romantic relationships that develop. If you are looking for a book that has lots of LGBTQ plus rep and you're okay with there being romantic relationships, but you don't want them to be the focus of the plot, you want them to be more in the background, then would really recommend this. Probably more than Priory, I would, yeah, recommend this, I think, over Priory of the Orange Tree, but also I think that there are connections between the two that you would miss if you read Priory Second. One of the main themes in this series is to do with body autonomy. So there is this prophecy in the west of this world that's in both books, but it's to do with this evil dragon who might return to the world. And the prophecy goes that in order to keep this dragon at bay, a queen from this particular family must always sit on the throne in the West. And this book in particular really discusses the impact that that has on these queens and how they feel like their bodies aren't their own. They don't have any control over their bodies. Even if they don't want to produce an heir, they have no choice because of how much this prophecy is ingrained in their culture and their religion. I thought that was just really interesting. It's something that I don't think I've come across much in fantasy, if at all. This gave me the epic feeling that I want when I pick up a book that is this long. Would also recommend the audiobook for this. I don't think I could have read the entire thing 
listening via audio because I do tend to get a little bit of fatigue if I'm listening to an audiobook for too long. But I read this physically while listening to the audiobook and yeah, I thought it was a great experience. Very immersive. So 4.5 stars, I think, but I probably will round up on Goodreads. Not only favourite, but still a very solid read. And I think it was kind of worth the page count. I think maybe 50 to 100 pages could have been cut out of the beginning because the first 300 to 400 pages were a bit of a slog to get through. But once I got into the second half, I felt like I was in the story and I was flying through it. Thank you so much to everyone who recommended me a book on that original video. I will be doing the same video again next year. So look out for that. It should be coming at some point in January. I should say actually all of the books that I've read for this vlog, all of them have over a four star average rating on Goodreads. So the fact that I've given most of them, in fact, all of them four or five stars, isn't really a surprise. I really enjoyed filming this vlog, even though it took me longer than I was expecting. I have found some great books that I know I'm going to be recommending specifically to people. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books and if you have any thoughts or feelings on them. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. But otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.